Welcome to Cellular Healing TV. This is episode 118. I'm your host, Meredith Dykstra. And of course, we have Cellular Healing Specialist, Dr. Dan Pompa on the line. And today we welcome special guest, Catherine Garceau. So we're going to be talking about a really interesting topic today, and uh, that is of emotional healing. And we're going to continue this. We've talked about it in some past shows, but we have kind of a unique spin on it today. Catherine is going to be sharing some of her expertise on EFT, or the Emotional Freedom Technique, and actually is going to be taking us through a routine to teach us how to implement this emotional healing strategy into our lives. So before we get the conversation started, let me tell you a little bit about Catherine. So Catherine Garceau is an Olympic bronze medalist and believes that health and happiness is achieved through physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being, all activating one's highest potential and the body's ability to self-heal. In her book, Swimming Out of Water, Garceau shares her Olympic story, including her unconventional healing path from eating disorders, depression, and autoimmune conditions. Catherine brings intuition, experiential learnings, and a hybrid of best practices to those she works with. Trained in emotional freedom techniques, or EFT, or the tapping, uh, Qigong, B-activated, resistance stretching, and regression resolution, her combined passion and skills create rapid shifts in emotional wellness, mindset, health, and lifestyle. So as I said, Catherine's going to show us how the emotional freedom technique can strengthen our immune and detoxification systems to feel more empowered on our healing journey. So welcome, Catherine and Dr. Pompa. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. We're so excited to have you. So, well, I'm just curious before we get started, how did you get into EFT, emotional wellness? Can you share a little bit about your story? Yes. Uh, to keep it short, I uh, came out of a career in synchronized swimming, and I had uh, eating disorders and depression in the way that it was like binge eating um, uncontrollably, and my immune system was pretty much... Um, very low, and I had been sick all throughout my childhood with bronchitis, pneumonia, all that stuff. Um, and so when I retired, I had put been put on Prozac at the time, and I had in me like, this isn't right, this doesn't feel right, it's not, I'm not getting all the information. So that's what kind of um, propelled me to study health and wellness more so that I can understand what was happening to me. And um, I did that. So I ended up befriending a great chiropractor that had all the books. So I was just starting to read about nutrition, about things that I had been eating that were obviously causing havoc in my system, including gluten and things I didn't know. Um, and finally, years later, really, I had gotten better control around my food and looking at the psycho-emotional like, loops that I had in my mind about perfectionism, about um, who am I now, uh, what if I lose this athletic body. Um, so a lot of th things that were going out in the back. And one of my good friends, um, well, actually, I found tapping. I think it was an online little tapping script on cra uh, cravings for chocolate. And it was like, oh, I, I really need this because I was like a chocolate M&M girl. And um, and so I remember doing it and doing the tapping, and um, it worked. Like, it felt calming when I did it, but I didn't really feel like it helped me get rid of my cravings. So I was like, well, this doesn't work. And I actually chucked it. I was like, EFT doesn't work. Years later, I was still investigating different tools and strategies to help um, feel better and, and heal, and one of my good and best friends that was also in the field and a nutritionist at an actually addiction center said, I just did this certification, you need to check out EFT. I'm like, oh, I know EFT, I've done it before, it doesn't work. And he's like, well, it's because it's a very simple technique, so there's different ways that you can do it. You think you're doing it well, but to get down to an addiction kind of thing, there's specific guidelines that you have to follow to get down to the root cause of why you have this unresolved anxiety. Mm. And when he said that, I thought, oh, interesting. So, yeah, I don't know, it was like a, a month later, I was doing level one and two with the, the expert teacher in San Diego where I was living, and I was like, oh, my God, this is powerful work. So that's kind of my journey in TFT. At first, I was like, well, it's nice, but eh. But then when I started to understand more the subtleties, 
that are often not completely shared, which I'll share with you today, sure. that made me um, understand more of how to use it. Mm. You know, I have to admit, you know, when I first started, you know, hearing about it, reading about it, trying it, I wasn't a believer. I wasn't. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a science guy, right? <laughs> I'm very skeptical until something's proven, right? Uh, you know, and I have to say, you know, what pulled me back in was testimonies from very, very sick clients who've done it, right? And mm -hmm. you know, they tried everything and they said, well, let me tell you what worked for that. And they, they talked about it. So, you know, it really got me back interested in it. And so now I am a believer, I, you know, and, you know, I think that a lot of people watching and listening to this may be where I was, right? So, you know, what's some of the, the science behind it, right? I mean, you know, what is some of the why it works? You know, I, I mean, maybe we should handle that after you explain more of what it is, right? I mean, because... Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. well, let me try to, to give it an idea. So, um, emotional freedom techniques is in the field of what we now call, I guess, because there's more than, you, I think you've um, covered EMDR. It's in the, in the field of energy psychology, meaning that um, it's, a form of psychology, but we're also hitting in some form on the energetic system to uh, basically unlock stored memory, um, negative charges or stagnation in the emotional system. The, um, I guess if you think of the acupuncture system coming from the Chinese philosophy, um, there's meridians in the body, and the meridians are there's just these energy channels, if you want to call them, but they're really just a grid of all the energy systems that we have. Mm -hmm. And um, instead of putting needles, like in acupuncture, we're actually using our own points, our own fingers, to tap on these points, gently, that helps to activate that actual energy flow. So in a way, um, it's interesting because one of the reasons why I decided to keep EFT in my toolkit as a coach is that I love the pow the part of it that is self-empowering, meaning you can go back after one or two sessions of getting the nuances or whatever, even after this video, and actually tapping by yourself. You don't actually need someone else, which is empowering, because then you have this new tool that you can do. All of a sudden, you're anxious because someone just bang your car and you're like, oh, and it ruins your door. No, you can actually interrupt and high emotion right in the moment when you start to get more familiarized with this kind of um, technique. Um, so yeah, so we're hitting on these different points, which I can tell you right now, I'm going to just go through it. You don't have to uh -huh. follow through on anything, but this is the karate point. This is where we start the uh, basic flow. Okay. We repeat a sentence three times when we do the karate point. Does it matter? Yeah, it doesn't matter what hand, whatever comes natural. Okay. Um, you want to be sitting in a in a position maybe where you uncross your legs and you make sure your feet are nice and grounded on the on the floor. And then so we're tapping on the karate point and we're gonna be setting up the 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 sentence and the flow with this point, which I'll explain after. Then um, top of the head, and just gently, then inside of the eye. And then outside of the eye. Does it matter which fingers you use? No, it doesn't matter. A lot of people like these two, you know, the index and the yeah. And then outside of the eye, yep. Yeah. And then under the eye, yep. Yeah. And then under the nose. How many times are we tapping? We kind of go, usually it's like seven, but it you don't count. It just gradually, you just get used to a rhythm. Um, but there's no real set rules. Sometimes we'll stay a little longer. And then we can do collarbone. Some people do the points like this. I'm just thinking like a lot of a, a lot of people are listening to us on the podcast, so we want to describe it as well. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, right. So okay, so I will start back. So we're gonna start with the karate point is on the side of the hand. Right. And there will be a, a handout that they can just click and download. The side of the hand where the little finger is, karate, I got it. Hiya. Yeah, got like it. yeah. <laughs> um top of the head, right on top of the head. Right on top. Yeah, right on top in the middle, and then inside the eye, just on the inside of the eyebrow. Yeah, okay, so right where your eyebrow kind of meets your nose. If yeah. You know. Okay, got it. And it's these, some of them, I mean, I, I tap with some people only on audio, and they sometimes at the beginning, they'll have a map of the printed points in front uh, of them. Right. Outside of the eye. 
Yeah, and then under the eye. Um, outside the eye, meaning at the end of the eyebrow. Right, the end of the eyebrow. Yeah. yeah. Under the eye is just like on the bone in the middle, right under the eye. Yep. Yeah, under the nose is just under the nose, basically on top of the lip. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then on the chin, right on the middle of the chin. Got it, right under the lip. Yep. Yeah. Collarbone, you can go like one inch on the angle outside of the collarbone on one or two sides. And you're actually on the collarbone or underneath it? Just underneath. But another way to do it, too, that a lot of people like is just basically tapping with your full hand on the thymus area. Mm -hmm. So you're just kind of tapping the top of your chest, and that hits it. And then under the arm, um, basically the bra strap just under the arm, right under the armpit. Mm -hmm. Can help our males out. Men, men who don't wear bras, you can just picture yourself wearing a nice bra. <laughs> um, and then we're not going to do that. One. So then we go back to the karate point. Okay. So we start on one side and then do the other. No, actually, yeah. you keep going. You don't have to do both sides at all. It's because it's kind of like hitting on the meridian. You don't need to activate both sides. And then you, you just start on the karate point, finish on the karate point. Yeah, or we'll talk, go to the top of the head if we're doing more. Oh, okay. than you can do it multiple times, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, so, is there a thought process? Are you are you thinking? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. So that's the the psychology part of it right. is that we're looking at uh, an emotional charge, and we're actually giving it a rating. So, for example, um, maybe there's um, there's a frustration because you've been working on your health for a long time and it feels like you get better and then you get worse again. You get better and you get worse again. And you try all these different protocols and it's just getting frustrating. Like what, what is it that I'm missing? Why am I always slightly sick or tired or fatigued or, you know, um, Dr. Pompa, what would you say one of the main um, maybe frustrations would be? Yeah, I mean, th there's one, right? It's like I just uh, can't lose weight anymore, right? Uh, you know, um, weight loss resistance. Yeah, my energy. I'm doing all these things. My energy is still not well. Okay. You know, my brain fog. Any of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we go to the weight loss, because I've um, worked a lot with emotional eating and all that. Sometimes we're even eating well, right? But our bodies are just at a plateau. And by the way, that's an epidemic today. Yeah. We know that stressors play a role in physical, chemical, or emotional all play a role in the body's hormonal system, right? Their inability to lose weight despite what they eat, despite how much they exercise. So again, this plays yeah. right in there. Yeah, and we never know, we never know what, how much of that, that uh, circumstance or that experience is having an emotional part of it, right? And that's why some people will tap and do a lot of like, whoa, I feel so different now. And there's a slightly, maybe there's, um, and we know that calories or food are not experienced when, in the same way if you're in a fight or flight state, par and sympathetic, or in parasympathetic. You're going to digest, you're going to assimilate, you're going to feel really like, wow, I'm fulfilled, I don't even need a second serving, you know, but when we're in that state of like panic, which is, could be subtle, we're constantly sort of eating and we're not feeling satisfied. So that could be part of it, that we think we're eating fine, but we're actually always stressed. And so our cortisol is not allowing our bodies to release. Yeah, so I mean, people they, get stuck in that sympathetic mode, right? I mean, they're, you know, there they are, and they're always producing the cortisol, which is one way of inter, uh, interfering. But however, these stored emotions that this is addressing, our, look, our, our theory is this, or our belief is this, mm -hmm. is that we remove the interference the body can heal just about anything, if not anything, right? I mean, but, the, you know, these emotions are like toxins. You know, we talk about true cellular detox. We have to get upstream and remove the toxin. But a lot of these emotions that, you know, from our childhood, things we may not even remember, are stored in our limbic system. This emotional memory is stored. That interferes and drives cellular inflammation. And with our interview with Bruce Lipton, I mean, he's the, you know, he's the guru of we know that our thoughts – even stored emotions drive cell inflammation. Therefore, that blunts our cells' ability to even hear from hormones. So, 
this, you know, this is intriguing because this tapping, you're, what you're saying is this is removing these stored emotions, right? Yes, and it's so great that you said you called it the interference. So one of the metaphors I use when I present it, I think Gary Craig, the founder of EFT, brought it up, I believe, in one of the documentations where you have static in the screen of your TV, your movie screen, right? You've got static from all the little things that have come and created this, they call it a zzz. So it's like, then you have a little more static, a little more static. So all of a sudden, your life, you think it's your normal life, but it's your normal life from the perspective of a lot of static, from all the times that you were highly stressed in your one to seven, Bruce Lipton talks about the one to seven period of time where you're fully imprinting. You're just like imprint, imprint, it's like that 95% subconscious, that's your one to seven. Well, guess what? A lot of times in your one to seven, we, we talk about trauma. There's trauma, trauma ages one through seven, to age seven is what you're yeah. The, yeah, sorry, and the um, zero to seven, really. And when we, we talk about the um, the small T, like small traumas, a lot of people, I realize, and I had, was culprit of that, too, is like we think, oh, well, that wasn't a big deal. Right. People have it worse. I That wasn't a big deal. But it was still to that four-year-old child, it was a big deal yeah. that mom and dad were fighting or that mom, you know, was – always hating her body because she was overweight because you know so there's a lot of things that in that period of time where we're just be, be, basically a sponge and it creates the 95% subconscious that we live our life from after wow there's a lot of points where we're adding static and that's what the nuances I spoke about before about the EFT and how it really works and how it could be Calming, but not so much creating big changes, is that we can tap on, oh, even though I'm frustrated that I'm still not losing weight, I love and accept myself now. We're tapping on something global, general, a general feeling of frustration. It can make us feel good in the moment, but it might not change the results of how we live our life the next day. But if we start to go, oh, when did I really feel that frustration? Or when was I really stressed all of a sudden when I was a kid? Because we're wanting that static to be neutralized. Right. So we're going back and we're doing an investigation of like, oh, okay, if we even just made it a list of ten, the top ten, if you had many YouTube videos, many YouTubes in your life that were the most like <gasps> fight or flight, like I better run, this is not safe, Okay. You make that list and you tap on those very specifically. You ask what the charges is on a scale of one to ten. How intense would you rate that fear, that scare, that you name the emotion? Mm -hmm. So you're gonna find a specific specific event that is that is um, directly related to the the issue that we're experiencing now, like. I can't seem to lose these extra pounds. I can't seem to maintain the body I want. I lose it and then I gain it back. I lose it and then I gain it back. Okay? So then you okay, what could be what when's the first time you felt really frustrated? Like you thought you had it and then you didn't. Maybe you were given something and then your brother stole it. I mean it could be so unrelated, but there's sl slight slight patterns of I don't deserve. I'm great and then I'm not. Or these little things, nuances that over time, you know. So what we do is, right, you make a list of these events. Then um, you want to maybe do an example? With yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm making my list uh, I'm making my list right now, you know, and I, I know this as being one of them. You know, okay, I think, why don't we do it with one of you? Think about maybe. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. I, I don't want to step in front of Meredith. I, 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 I can so, we'll, do, we'll do a tapping that's more general after for everyone to do. Okay. That. All right. Yeah, exactly. In EFT, we call, there's a, two things I want to mention. One, you might be thinking, oh, I have so many things that happened. I would be tapping my whole life. <laughs> it's actually a generalization effect, meaning if you get enough of 
the specific events that are directly the same emotion, like that same uh, frustration or that same, like, I'm not good enough feeling. Um, over time, if you do enough of them, of the main ones, oh, it's gone. A anyone that you think of, oh, I don't have the charge anymore. So okay. there's a generalization effect that you don't have to do every single event of your life. Two right. is um, there's a, a concept called barring benefits, meaning that even if we're going to be tapping on your little thing, um, Dr. Pompa's issue or event, we actually can all tap together and benefit from it because even if we didn't experience that, we're helping the healing in that way and it's activating in some way whatever's closest to it and we get a, a release that way too. So it's kind of cool because you could always be gaining from tapping on other people's stuff. <laughs> That's awesome. Like praying for other people too, in a way, right? Exactly. It is in a way. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I'm a Christian, you know, and I, when I tapped in the past, I, I bring God right into it, you know, because I know God's healed me, and I know that. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, and so you could be more, you know, with me, that's a, a I like going there, right? Because okay, perfect. Yeah. He is yeah. my my higher power, you know what I mean, and I, I give him credit for all things. You know, I, of the three that I immediately write down that I know, you know, I, I couldn't read until sixth grade. And, you know, unfortunately, I'm watching my son go through the same thing. You know, he feels dumb. Meanwhile, out of, you know, everyone in this house, I just told someone yesterday, my gosh, he's the smartest of all of us, right? It, it's so sad. His, his brain is so overpowered in one direction. <laughs> and then, but yet he can't read. But I have wounds from that, great wounds. I, you know, being made fun of, and then I compensated with other things, right? And, you know, it's like in... I, you know, it's on my heart now just because I see it in my son. And then when um, I got sick, I still have major wounds from when I got sick, right? I mean, you know, I, I fear things, and, I, you know, I, I shouldn't. And then um, when we adopted two children, I mean, we were just taken to the bank over this thing, you know, from, you know, this horrific battle. So those are three big wounds for me. I, we can just focus on the reading one. That's the earliest one that I can remember. Yeah. Maybe starting back that far. So. Yeah, I was going to say, why don't we go with that, and that way you can even see how you can apply with your son maybe so uh, right. you, know, you can have that, that ripple effect. And I'm sure parents listening and you have it for yourself or someone you're seeing, it's great because it applies in all, all the other ways. Yeah. Why, how do you feel, um, what would be the main issue or not the issue. Are you? Do you think you overdo now? You overwork because of that. Is that yeah. kind of the, the the result? You know, like many people's wounds, it becomes part of their greatness in a sense, right? It's like so. Uh, you know, when I figured it out later, then I overstudied, and then I I have my I developed the gift of memory to compensate for what I couldn't do. I had people read next to me, and I'd remember what they said, right? And I so you know gifts now because of it. However. Yeah, I do. I I, th I overcompensate, overstudy, over, um, you know, do so many things. Because and so, is there an underlying feeling, like maybe very subtly there, um, that's just I'm not enough, no matter what I do. What is it? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that I, I can still get caught up in that. You know, like texting and emailing, and it's very difficult for me because I've ha I had dyslexia. You know, so it's like, and I. I constantly get very frustrated with myself that, you know, if I were only smarter here, if I could only spell, you know, then I could write better. And, you know, and it's like, so I am. I'm, I'm really hard on myself there. Instead of going, gosh, you know, I'm great at video. I'm great at this. You know what I mean? If, you know what I mean? But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm constantly going, you know, man, if I didn't have this, I would be better here. Okay, so the frustration, I think, is the, the emotion that you're feeling the most. Yeah, that's great. There, there's other ones. But I, I think you just expressed that one. That's great. Now think back at the time when you're little. If there's a specific day that you remember just being there, something was done, said, or you were just there alone and you couldn't read or write, or what? What? What's the specific moment you can remember? Even if you don't remember, by the way, for people listening and watching, if you can't remember it co uh, completely, it's okay. If you know that it was a generalized thing always happening. Make up one. Because well, yeah, I remember the time. Remember saying, that's around. a possibility. Yeah, they were going around the room, and um, it was cut, the reading. You know, read this, read this. And I can remember several of the situations where I knew it was going to come to me, right? And let me tell you something. I still have – I'm a little embarrassed even uh, talking about this now, 
You know, I am. I, it's embarrassing. Oh, right? Yeah, it's like thank you know, for your you openness know, and courage. People come here for me to hear great knowledge, and then hear you know, <laughs> you know yes. hearing that I'm a, a dunce. You know, it's no. part of the thing, I guess so. And um, anyways, <laughs> hold on. Sorry, I knew that would happen. <laughs> Sorry, so, a guy's coming to wash my uh, get my dog and they. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways, yeah. So um, but when it, even now today when people were coming like around the room like let's say I had to read something aloud, I could do it right. I, I get this anxiety like because I'm still I, I wouldn't say I'm a great out loud reader right. I've learned to compensate and read because I read a lot. I do. I read a ton. However, if you told me to read something aloud, immediately my brain would freeze mm -hmm. because I'm anchoring back to embarrassment. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I can tell you that in those memories of having to come around and not being able to read, you know, I mean, I, you know, I would rather run out of the room and poop my pants, for goodness sakes, than just sit there and be able to know how to read. You know what I mean? It would be less embarrassing. So okay. there's the oh, embarrassment. Okay, so the frustration is almost like on top of an embarrassment, which Total I... Total embarrassment. I mean... It is embarrassment, complete embarrassment. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, great. So uh, if we go back to that moment right now, you're in that chair and they're coming around and you're feeling that feeling of embarrassment on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the worst embarrassment ever, 1, eh, 0, nothing, where would you rate it? I immediately, even today, would re re probably put a seven or eight on it. And back then, of course, it That's was. That's what we want today, right now. Okay, good. Like if I had the, if you said, Dr. Bamba, could you read me that? You know, there would be a seven or eight of anxiety. Okay. You know, open up Bruce Lipton's book and read uh, the first paragraph. I'd be like, whoa, because it's like I know I'm going to be like, oh, you know, and I'm going to look oh, dumb. Right? Okay, so, great. Okay, so um, let's. Okay, great. And do you feel somewhere in your body, the, think back when you're the little boy in that chair, about how old, what grade? I picture myself around fourth or fifth grade in that one experience. I, I probably around fifth grade. Okay, great. Um, all right, so fifth grade. Um, and yeah, any sensation in the body? Oh, by the way, I just thought of another embarrassment. I had to go to the special classes. Right in like sixth grade, and yeah. that was terrible too. Yeah, but anyways, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So this is this is great that you're doing all this because for people listening, this is exactly what happens when you tap into a main core emotion that you're actually still experiencing today. Then you start to go, oh my god, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. The 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 trickiness and the gift in EFT is that it's simple. We can easily try to put it all into one package or Again, we go one weed at a time. And this one in the chair came as a first one, so we're going to we're gonna stay specific on that. And it's good. You would take note, oh, the time I had to go to the special guy, you know? So, um, okay, anywhere in your body that you feel it? Yeah. Your chest, sort of, yeah. Maybe not. You don't have to. Okay. Yeah, I, when I get that anxiety, I, I feel it here and I feel it rise up. Okay, rise up. Okay. So we're going to go, I'm going to actually name the points for people listening. You can follow along as well. And what we do is I will say the sentence and Dr. Pompa and everyone else will repeat after me. If I say a word that's really close to what you want to say, but it's not completely what you want to say, say what you want to say because we want it to be your words. I always say that because it doesn't have to be exactly. Okay. So even though I had... I know, even though I felt so embarrassed. Should I say it to myself or? You're going to repeat it out loud. Everyone can repeat it. Even though that I was so embarrassed. I could, they were coming to, it was almost my turn and I knew I couldn't read. It was almost my turn and I knew I couldn't read. Right here and right now. Right here and right now. I'm okay. I'm okay. Even though I felt so embarrassed. Even though I felt so embarrassed. I could just run out and go to the bathroom. I could just run out and go to the bathroom. Right here and right now. Right here and right now. I am okay. I am okay. Even though I had so much embarrassment. Even though I had so much embarrassment. It was in my chest and kind of coming up. In my chest and coming up. Right here and right now. Right here and right now. I am okay. 
I am okay. On top of the head, this was all in the karate point. So on top of the head, this embarrassment. This embarrassment. Inside of the eye. This embarrassment. This embarrassment. Outside of the eye. I can't read and it's my turn next. I can't read and it's my turn next. Under the eye. So embarrassed. So embarrassed. Under the nose. I feel so embarrassed. I feel so embarrassed. On the chin. I don't know if I could do it. I don't know if I can do it. On the collarbone points. I'm so embarrassed. I'm so embarrassed. Under the arm. Feeling so embarrassed. Feeling so embarrassed. Karate point. All this embarrassment. All this embarrassment. Top of the head. All this embarrassment. All this embarrassment. Inside of the eye. I don't think I can read. I don't think I can read. Outside of the eye. This big, big embarrassment. This big, huge embarrassment. Under the eye. I felt in my chest and coming up to my head. I felt in my chest and coming up to my head. Under the nose. This deep embarrassment. This deep embarrassment. On the chin. So, so embarrassed. So, so embarrassed. So, so embarrassed. Okay, take a deep breath in. And out. Now think back, you're the little boy and you're in the chair and it's close to your turn. On a scale of 1 to 10, where would you rate it now? A 2. Okay. What's the 2 about, you think? Is it still embarrassment? What's the, the, the part of it that's still kind of like, oh, but this? Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to... I don't know. I just immediately, when you said it, I put myself back there, and you know. And again, I is it less just because I am more relaxed now? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I don't know. Is it less because you know, just talking about it? You know, when you first start talking about something, it's more embarrassing. I don't okay. Know. So if I I were to ask you to um, read the first book, the first page of Bruce Lipton's page uh, book now, what would you feel? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think less, but it, is it less just because I already told everyone it would be really hard for me? <laughs> I don't know. I, it's, I'm being honest. I'm trying to be oh, really it's honest. Great. It's great. Okay. This is the okay, case. So I'm going to do a little bit of like um, more of uh, intuition of what we've talked about. Um, I wanted to show first how specific we want to stay on the very emotions. Notice we really just stayed basically saying, this embarrassment the whole time. Uh -huh. That said, now because we're here and you're talking about Bruce Lipton and it's exciting because now we're like, well, maybe you can really read this book today with yeah. us, whether it be on this video or just with Meredith after, um, you know, that you can feel a difference. And yeah. I, I'd love to know that. You know what I mean? So we're going to do a little bit of a more of a. I'm willing to embarrass myself. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good step. I, I, you know, it's like okay, I want to be really open. You know what? I really, I, I really want to be open because I feel like it's going to help. You know. I think so too. I mean, I, I expose my eating disorders and all that stuff in my book because I knew that a lot of people who think, oh, Olympic athletes have it all together, training and all that. We don't. And yeah. in my path since, I've weighed 200 pounds. I, I've really gone through a lot of that I, I expose because we're not perfect and we all have our stuff. The only reason I know what I know is because I got sick, right? Uh, you know, my degree, my doctor, all that stuff. You know, I know what I know because I got sick, just like you. Matter of fact, good opportunity to promote your book. What's your book? Oh, it's called Swimming Out of Water. Yeah, you said that in the beginning. Where do they get it? Amazon? What are they? Yeah, Amazon, and I'll have it on my website and all that. Yeah, right. uh, there's actually a, I don't know if it's art. Yeah, and there a, a new ebook um, current version, so it'll be exciting. Um, okay, and what I want to do though is because there could be a lot more on the embarrassment of now. 
like you said, there's other events. So what we do is like, oh, but what if I open up this can of worms and now I know there's more work to do. So what we do is like we kind of like do a sort of sneaking away tapping. That means that we're actually going to trust and know that it's actually, we can put it away for now and get back to it later. So it's a good way to know that you can actually do some tapping, open up some deep stuff, and close it and feel safe and actually productive in your day after. So it's like a, a good thing to do. And because of what you've just shared, I think it will be nice to do more of a, a round like that for you right now. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to go on the karate point, and again, everyone can borrow benefits. Even though I've, re I've released some of this embarrassment, even though I've released some of this embarrassment. It went from a 10 to a 2. Went from a 7 to a 2. Yeah. Um, but part of me thinks it's just because I'm calmer. Part, part of me, me thinks it's just thinks that maybe because I'm just because more calm. Yeah. And there's a lot of other embarrassing stories. There's a lot of other embarrassing stories. So I'm still kind of embarrassed about it all. So I'm still kind of embarrassed about it all. I did some really good work already. I've done some really good work already. Yeah. Even though I I still have some embarrassment stories. Even though I still have some embarrassment stories. And I don't know that I could just start reading Bruce Lipton's book. Even though I don't know if I could just start reading his book right now. Yeah, I'm open to um, I'm open to the possibility. I'm open to the possibility that I could actually one day just pick it up and have no embarrassment at all. That I could just. Simply one day pick it up and read in front of my audience right here and have no embarrassment at all. Yeah. So even though I still have this embarrassment. Even though I still have some of this embarrassment. And I know there's a lot, maybe more work to do. And I know that there's a, more work to do. I'm um, going to be uh, accepting of the work I've already done. I'm going to be accepting of the work I've already done. All this work on embarrassment. All this work on embarrassment. Feels like a, a theme I've lived my whole life. Feels like a theme I've lived my whole life. And still today, I think it would be there if I was asked to read. Still today, I think it might be there even if I was asked to read. But the good thing is, I've done a lot of good things because of this embarrassment, too. But the good thing is, I've done a lot of good things because of this embarrassment, too. I've learned to... Be courageous and strong. I've learned to be courageous and strong. And um, I've welcomed God and prayer in my life. Welcome God and prayer in my life. And I continue to be, um, I continue to feel, um, ex uh, not ex proud that I can help other people. I am. I'm very proud that I can help other people. Mm -hmm. So all this embarrassment. So all this embarrassment. That I have more work to do on. That I have more work to do on. I could even put it away for now. I could even put it away for now. And I could I could feel more just peaceful in my body. And I could feel more peaceful in my body. And even just talking about it is a good thing. And even just talking about it is a good thing in healing. Yeah, it's not like the big elephant in the room anymore. Yeah, it's not. It's not like the big elephant in the room anymore. Oh my gosh, now everyone knows. Oh my gosh, now everyone knows. And it makes me human and humble. Makes me human and humble. And I I accept how I feel about all this. And I do accept how I feel about all this. All this this embarrassment. All this embarrassment. That I used to make wrong as a little boy. That I used to make wrong as a little boy. I know that now it's okay. I know now it's okay. And I can just have fun with this embarrassment. And I could have fun with this embarrassment. I can just know that it's one of my things. I could just know it's one of my things. And it could be really exciting to like read out loud with no problems. And it'd be really exciting to read out loud with no problems. With no anxiety in my chest. No anxiety in my chest. Yeah, with no anxiety in my chest. So for now, I'm going to put this embarrassment away. So for now, I'm going to put this embarrassment away. And just feel calm and present in my body. You feel calm and present in my body. Okay, take a deep breath in. So, can you do 
positive affirmation as well, like after you express the problem, then go around and say, hey, I, I believe that God is healing me in this problem. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, and, and then for me, I could take that and express it and even the sense of, look, I wouldn't be who I am and able to serve the mission I serve if it wasn't for that because that is true in my brain too, you know? Yeah, it is. Even though that if I thought, oh my gosh, I have to read and, you know, oftentimes I get a new PowerPoint, I look at it and I go, uh, I anchor back, right? It's like it, everything gets all jumbled up. It's like, you know, darn it. It's like, stop right here. I would be up on this stage in this show, you know, if I didn't start like the way I started. You know? Totally. Yeah, and, and even my sickness, right? I mean, that's a negative anchor I said, but here I am today, right? It's like the kids we adopted and all the stress. It's like all of it has purpose. God has purpose in it. But we still anchor back to the negative emotion. And that's what we can cast, you know, that's what we can release. Yeah. You know, that it's like everything. There's a place for everything. And within the EFT world, there are a lot of contradictory um sub-techniques of tapping, and I, funny enough, I just finished a, a, an advanced kind of training, and I love learning from different teachers for myself because I get to see, okay, here's what they think is the right way, and here's what, there's no wrong way of doing tapping. You will always feel kind of good in your body after. That said, the point of being specific and going back to the specific events is really key at getting immediate and lasting results. Uh, I say immediate as far as feeling good. It doesn't mean that your thing is over. But um, that said, a lot of people have fun with positive affirmation, positive reframes, like I did cho cho uh, choice statements. I choose to instead of just I deeply and completely accept myself. In the first tapping, I said, right here, right now, I'm okay. Remember when we were doing this setup sentence at the karate point, the traditional setup sentence and um, you can find it on every kind of like what's the sentence for EFT websites it's out there for free is even though I feel blah 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 or even though I feel this because of this even though I have this emotion you always start with the emotion because it's emotional freedom techniques you start with the emotion so even though I feel embarrassed that I have this thing with reading okay I deeply and completely love and accept myself now, that's a big statement to say when you're actually working on something that's potentially negative. That's my feeling, and a lot of um, a lot of practitioners and experts are talking about this. So a lot of people just simplify it. I deeply and completely accept myself. It feels more real. Yeah, I like the real. Say that again. I deeply and completely accept myself. I like that better. What? I like that better. Yeah, because love and accept, it's like, whoa, that's a big thing to say to your brain when it's actually talking about how embarrassed you're feeling. So that's kind of how I deeply and completely accept myself. In a place where you're kind of traumatized in that chair in school and you're like, oh, my God, I'm so embarrassed. You're almost in a, t a small T trauma, right? You're like in that, <gasps> it's happening again. Well, right here, right now, I'm okay. It, it automatically drops you into the now, into safety, and your brain goes, oh, yeah, I am okay. It's like another form of saying I'm enough, you know? So that's another one that I really like that um, I've recently learned that I feel is really powerful because it doesn't bring up – you don't want to bring up resistance in the brain where the brain goes, well, I don't really love myself, you know, because then you're just – introducing kind of confusion I, I feel so I deeply and completely accept myself yeah. is yeah. a very easy clean way to say even though I have this emotion I deeply and completely accept myself yeah that three times in the setup even right. though I have this emotion I deeply and completely accept myself and a third time then when you start on the top of the head you're just gonna say the reminder phrase which as starting EFT tappers you really just have to repeat the emotion and keep feeling yourself in that chair. That embarrassment, felt so embarrassed, that embarrassment in my chest, the embarrassment, the embarrassment, the embarrassment. It's good to, to ask, oh, where is it? Because even we, we forget that we are sort of physical bodies and the body electric or, you know, the bio biology of belief, everything is cellular and moving and so if we have a sensation somewhere regarding that emotion it's good to voice it and locate it 
because we're just become again, we're becoming more specific. Um, it's another way to do it. So and questions first, from, you, from from having experienced that and where you're at right now. Say that again. Any questions that come yeah. up just from yeah. having yeah, yeah, just to, just for my viewers and listeners and my own sake. Uh, so you know, once we you know we're tapping here on the karate point, and we you know we're telling ourselves that we deeply and completely accept ourselves, and then you know, hey, I, I, and I'm okay. You know, but but we always start with the emotion thing, right? We're starting with, gosh, you know, yes, I was embarrassed because, or whatever emotion it is, you know. You can literally just say the emotion and think of the because. You don't necessarily have. So another emotion, maybe an emotion for someone who can't lose weight. Um, that may be embarrassment. That may be yeah. frustration. That may Absolutely. Be. Well, there was a lot of embarrassment, and I find women, um, including myself, like if you were a chubby kid or you were a big person when you were little, you had a lot of embarrassing stories of like, oh, wishing you were smaller, bigger, or whatever. And so those are, again, in your 95% subconscious. Yeah. Um, it's, it's remarkable that we're having this discussion today because my son, right, He's he was really skinny, you know, of was, he still is, right, and I was really skinny as a child, right, which, again, another wound, i got to add it to my list. God, <laughs> this is killing me. This is my most embarrassing show ever. So, anyways, and, you know, but i watching now him, this is my, uh, my other son, I, he just went on up to his mother about, how embarrassed he is about being so skinny, and he gets made fun of, you know, for it, for his size, etc. And I said, "Gosh, it's just the same as a, the overweight kid." And people don't understand the skinny kid, you mm -hmm. know. It's like they go, like they wouldn't think of that as the same. But being told you're fat and being told you're skinny, I'm telling you, it's the same word. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I was gonna say. One of the things that we do when we go through the EFT training, and also, um, you know, I I will encourage it for some clients, is called the personal peace procedure. And what you do is you literally just sit there and make a list of anything you still feel shame about. Because shame is just not, I mean, talking about the power of emotions and cellular health, shame is just not a good good energy you want in your body. And yeah. who doesn't have shame stories, right? Yeah. Uh, so you, what you do is you make your shame list and you pull out, you know, a, a chart of like how to remember to do tapping and we can have one on your website if it helps you. Um, but the, you're, you can have, okay, one a day. Every morning you get up and part of your little morning prayer, you know, your, your, your exercise or whatever, you do 10 minutes on one of your shame events. And you chip away at your 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 shame events, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, I feel kind of more confident. I I feel like really proud of my life. Or you know, you'll you'll start to feel the benefits that will sneak in in ways that you just feel more free to be yourself. Because what? Back mm -hmm. to those screens. You have less static. You have more of a clear screen from which you see your life. So yeah. great. I just went through you know my list here, and then I I immediately started drawing arrows to like shame, embarrassment, you know, the, the different emotions. So mm -hmm. tying it to an emotion, tying it to an actual event to be more specific, yeah. tying it to the feeling you get in your body, right? Mm -hmm. And then going through the points, you know, we, we acknowledge the emotion, right? That's the first thing. The second thing is we acknowledge that we're okay and that we still deeply and completely accept ourselves. Yes. And then we go around the points Still acknowledging the emotion. What did you call that? You called that reminding. Reminder phrase, yeah. The reminder phrase is pretty much just stating the emotion, right? Absolutely. You just okay. tune into the event and you tune into that moment and the, 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 yeah, you just tune in, tune in, tune in, and you keep saying, oh, that embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. I was so embarrassed. Right. If, let's say, you do this whole thing and let's say you said it's still at a seven, if anything, it's up at a nine now, if you said yeah. that, which happens. Because all of a sudden you're tuned in and you feel it even more. But it could be then to say, what part of it really gets to you? And it could be that you remember the teacher's eyes. Like you just have that detail. It's like it's called an aspect of the event. Meaning there's a one detail that just like can't, you can't, you'll always remember that guy's voice tone or whatever because it was like it imprinted. And that's when you, 
even though I still have an embarrassment, I can feel the teacher looking at me. Like you say that aspect, you know what I mean? Oh, that embarrassment. Oh, those eyes, they were staring at me. I was so embarrassed. So it's like yeah, adding that, aspect, and then usually the charge will go down. Can you have? Can you do two emotions at once? Can you do shame and embarrassment? It's actually really recommended not to. Again, for that, okay. scene, you get better results the more specific you are. Mm. But you can do another emotion. Because it's like, but I feel the both, and I feel it's like they go together. Okay, great. Let's just do them in separate rounds because they're they're they are different. It's like if you were trying to, you know, like medicine, you can't do everything at once. So separate rounds is the thing. Do it. Do a round for shame. Yeah. Do a separate round for embarrassment. Okay, that that's good. Meredith, you probably have questions. Those are. All, I think I got through all mine. <laughs> awesome. Um, well, how often do you typically suggest doing the routine every day, multiple times a day, a few times a week for maintenance? How do you kind of suggest uh, implementing it? I think at first to just you know start using tapping. It's great to do it once a day just to like get a, a feel for it. It doesn't have to be very long. Um, you know, 10, 15 minutes you could get. And of course, if you get inspired, you're like, oh, I want to do this event too. Just keep going. But it's it's nice. Um, I It depends too for sleep uh, issues. Um, it's nice to do it before bed. I actually have, and there's still up YouTube videos of like how you can tap and follow along on, you know, clearing your day or clearing whatever emotion. You can obviously do something specific. Something in your day really triggered you. Tap it out. Because why would you want to go to bed with that kind of looping in your mind and you feeling more anxious because of it. So I just thought about that. Before bed. Before bed, according to one of the things that uh, Dr. Lipton uh, taught us on the, the past interview is doing it right before bed as you're at that point of you're ready to fall asleep, you're getting really tired. So that's like one of the only times you can match from ages zero to seven. Seven, so yeah. We're in that delta phase, right? It's like we're in that we're heading into that deep sleep, but right before you get there, you get into that very hypnotic state right mm -hmm. before the deep sleep, right before you fall asleep. And he's yeah. like, that, that's that same wavelength that you're in to age seven, and we're duplicating that pattern of learning. That's I suggested doing the affirmations then. Yeah. yeah. His suggestion was listening to different affirmations at that time. Yeah. Tapping at that time. I mean, my gosh, now we're, now we're bringing two shows together here. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and another thing too, if you if you're thinking about your kids, you, you don't necessarily have to um, do the full thing with little kids. Um, I actually, for the first time, I am back in the you know several years ago. I, my my niece had a meltdown at dinner, and she was like in at her room with anger. And I just you know the, my family wasn't really in the know of what I did, so it was kind of like, what are you doing? Like, just let me go in the room. So I went, and she's like three and a half, and she's pouting and crying. And I said, do you want to just play a little game, okay? And I said, you know, mommy still loves me. And I just started tapping on the points. You don't have to do worry about the, the setup sentence. You just say, I'm so sad. Mommy and grandma yelled at me. I'm so sad. I got yelled at. I was just in a bad mood, and I didn't want to eat. You know, I kind of go through what I saw happen at the table. And after, you know, this sadness, this sadness, and then after a round, she's just looking at me like, what are you doing? And then I'm like, let's play a little more. So we play a little more. If you don't see a shift, you just keep going. And literally after the second round, I said, do you want to go back out? She says, yeah. She was like brand new, you know, little Sophia. And she went out, and two weeks later, I heard from her dad that he was like, what did, what did Catherine do to Sophia? And and I was like, well, what happened? He's like, she's been an angel for two weeks. <laughs> so it's like you never know that you don't have to. I'm saying this not only to show you that you can do it on kids with no worries. You just kind of go for it and tap on their points. If they're willing, just tell them it's a game. And and you can't get it wrong, really. The, the worst thing that you'll do is you'll calm the field, <laughs> really. And the, the, the best thing is, like, you'll, you'll solve a big case. But... If if you don't, it's okay. It's still it's still a positive experience for the nervous system. Even if you get the words right, whatever, you can't get it wrong. Yeah, actually, that brings up one of my questions. You know, what what's what is some of the science behind it? You know, I asked that in the beginning. As far as like why tapping? I mean, what if we went through this without even tapping anything? Why does the tapping 
make a significant? I, I think I know the answer, but I want my viewers. Yeah. So from my understanding, the way I like to explain it, some of the the science that's been showing the results in the brain. So we are going basically we're we're activating in our memory something that's generating a fight or flight response. So we're in the reptilian part of the brain by by what we're talking about or what we're saying or voicing. As we're going through the points, and we don't know where the energy or the stuck emotion is. It could be in one meridian for one person, one place through the other. We don't know. There used to, well, there is still a technique called thought field therapy, TFT, that um, that is more specific. So it's a different algorithm of point for each case. What Gary Craig found was that if you just tap on all the points, at some point you're going to unlock wherever the emotion is stuck. So it's a little simpler than trying to figure out what algorithm to do to actually cater to the anger versus the fear, whatever. So all that to say that while we're tapping, it's gradually bringing the energy and the flow of the the blood flow to the forebrain, meaning the feeling of repair, creativity, openness to change all that to the forebrain. So we're kind of like superimposing a negative energy, negative memory, sorry, uh, emotional charge and that feeling in the reptilian part of the brain and while the tapping because we're doing this tapping at the same time we're shifting the energy to the forebrain and the blood flows here um, it's been shown that GABA goes up uh, serotonin goes up endorphins are released and cortisol re- reduces so there's a lot of benefits in the brain that are happening in the tapping. Like your reaction is very typical. Well, it's just because I've calmed myself down. Great. It might be, but I'm wondering if in a stress time tomorrow or whenever next week, you think, how embarrassed am I of me in the chair? It could still be down at a two because that very charge that was at a seven is down to a two. It just is. And if you do a couple more stories or little mini YouTubes that are related to that same embarrassment, you'll probably feel um, a generalization effect where you go back in that chair. Oh, that that chair event's at a zero now. How interesting, right? Yeah. And it's just because you're starting to play around with those neural nets that all got well, you know, what uh, fires together, wires together. Yeah. So they're all like that, and now. We're yeah. ooh, we're stretching. We're we're creating new ones, and we're ah, and so the memories are just changed. It really is about making more neuro pathways, and that energy stimulation obviously is making it happen much faster. And yeah. uh, you know, it's interesting. Now, what conditions um, have you seen like dramatic changes from? Like, I'm thinking about my multi chemical <clears throat> sensitivity people. I know they get help from. And then we said in the beginning, like, how would it improve detox or your immune system? What what would you do for that? How, how yeah. does that? I think going back to the, the, you can tap on the now, of course, because that always makes your body feel, you know, even though I have um, low energy, I'm going to accept myself right now, even though I have this low energy. You can do moment to moment things, like how you're feeling in the moment. Like if you decide to do that every morning, like, great, I woke up tired again, even though I feel tired, you know, it's, it's in the moment stuff. Again, the gem of tapping is to go back. Why is this happening, Right. So for, for sick stuff, and I, I put it, I think, in the notes, it's like, were you really sick as a child often? Maybe. If you were, how did you feel? What was the emotion did you feel when you were always sick? There's there's some positive things like um, uh, secondary gains. Sometimes we don't realize that we get sick because we need out of a situation in our life that we're not willing to admit. Mm. Our bodies get sick. Right, um, we're not willing to admit that really this relationship is not right. This, you know, this environment is completely not right. And what a, our body goes in chronic fatigue, our body goes in shutdown, our body gains weight because we want to keep men away because there's an abuse thing that's not been handled from you know 12 years old. So that's the thing. It's like there usually is always a related um, emotion in the past. That can go, you know, you know, it's not fun to go there sometimes. But if we get really honest with ourselves, that's really where the true healing, I think, happens. Yeah. For me, like, you know, and I haven't been a binge-free person since I found EFT, since even right. I still have my 
oh, goodness, what was this one about? <laughs> you know, I'll overeat and I'll feel, you know, horrible, but it's not the same way. It, it doesn't mean anything about my worth. It's just like, oh, that red flag, there's something I still need to go back and see. Or it's a part of my trauma capsule that got released all of a sudden that I need to look at. It doesn't scare me. It doesn't stop my life like it used to, or it doesn't make me super sick like it used to, too. So it's just a matter of like seeing how you end up. I said it earlier in a in a session with someone. Um, you become like an emotional gymnast. You become more able to like, oh, these are just my emotions, and I I don't have to pack them all into I'm stressed and overwhelmed. I can see that there is this and this and this, and you start to understand your emotional landscape, and it over time it doesn't scare you as much. It just yeah. becomes like oh, it's just another realm. In which I can play. Can you can you do this? Like, let's say you have a fear in a moment, right? I have people out there because I was one of them, and I, I had I would sniff a chemical and I would have fear because I know it would make me react a certain way when I was sick. Can you say? Can you start tapping and say, you know, I know I have fear right now of that chemical, but and yeah. then say, but I'm healed. Yeah. I mean, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do, should we do a, a tapping? To, for everyone um, that has those sensitivities? Yeah, like, go ahead. We'll finish with that as an example. Yeah, okay. You know, in, uh, so more so. of a general tapping again. Yeah. You can go yeah. back to your specific stuff, but this will be a more general tapping for that. So even though I feel sensitive. Even though I feel sensitive. And right. I know this toxin is bad for me. And I know this toxin is bad for me. And this is stressing me out. Stressing me out. Yeah. Right here and right now. Right here and right now. I'm also okay. I'm also okay. Even though I have this these sensitivities. Even though I have these sensitivities. And I know this toxin is not good for me. And I know this toxin is not good for me. I also know that I'm very resilient. I also know that I'm very resilient. Even though I have these sensitivities. Even though I have these sensitivities. And I'm afraid this toxin is going to hurt me. I'm afraid this toxin will help me. I choose to stay strong in my body right now. I choose to stay strong in my body right now. These sense on top of the head, these sensitivities. These sensitivities. Inside the eye, feeling very sensitive. Feeling very sensitive. Outside the eye, this toxin. This, this toxin. toxin. Under the eye, I don't like to expose myself. I don't like to expose myself. Under the nose. I don't want to get sick again. I don't want to get sick again. On the chin. I have to be careful. I have to be careful. On the collarbone. These sensitivities. These sensitivities. Sensitivities. Under the arm. Feeling this vulnerability. Feeling this vulnerability. Karate point. This sensitive feeling. The sensitive feeling. The sensitive feeling. Top of the head. I also know I'm going to be okay. I also know I'm going to be okay. Inside the eye. I walk out in a sea of toxins all the time. I walk out in a sea of toxins all the time. Outside the eye. And I'm actually getting stronger and healthier every day. I'm actually getting stronger and healthier every day. Under the eye. And even my brain and nervous system. Even my brain and nervous system. Can register that I'm already strong. Can right. register that I'm already strong. Under the nose. I can register that I don't have to even be this sensitive. I can register that I don't even have to be this sensitive. On the chin. I can be resilient. I can be resilient. I've been resilient my whole life. I've been resilient my whole life. Collarbone. So this toxin? So this toxin? It's like nothing compared to who I am. Nothing. So nothing compared to who I am. Under the arm. And who God made me. Yeah. Yeah. God made me strong. God made me strong. God made me very resilient. God made me very resilient. Top the head. So I'm going to be strong right now. So I'm going to be strong right now. Inside the eye. In fact, I don't even have to effort in being strong. In fact, I don't even have to give effort to being strong. Outside the eye, I could just be who I am. Just be who I am. Under the eye. Calm in my body. Calm in my body. Under the nose. 
Not even affected by this toxin. Not even affected by this toxin. On the chin. It's like I didn't even register it was here. Like I didn't even register it was here. Collarbone. Feeling calmer about it right now. Feeling calmer about it right now. Okay, take a deep breath. I'll tell you what, I, I guarantee you there's thousands of people that got a lot of benefit from that right there because we have thousands that watch this show that are so sensitive, you know, and I get the emails and speak to so many of them. So that's going to help so many people. people well, I'm happy what I could do is make sure that I not include a little mini guide of just the, print, the simple tapping. Yep. But I can also, I'll write out this, even if it's not the exact same words, I think, because obviously I was on the go right now, but I could really um, think about a tapping that would be good for general uh, sensitivities. Well, what we'll do is that would be great, and Meredith will put that in, a, in an article. So it'll be the heart of the article, Meredith, for people, mm -hmm. right? And that way, because with the video when we release this, we'd yeah. like to release an article on some of the, the shows that we know are really helpful and instructive. So that will really just set up a little article. So also for Meredith, you can give a little bit of history of it, just a little bit of basic information and how oh, to yeah, I can I can even send some of the best uh, research studies you can yeah. get out there. Yeah. Absolutely. So in you know, you and uh, like I said we can just um, you know put your name on there as part of the authoring of it. So just write that up and we'll put that article out with this episode. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely will. And thank you so much, Catherine. This is just such a, a neat tool to, to bring in because I know so many of us, we eat the right things and you know we exercise. We do all of these different things and sometimes we're just not getting results. And, and this emotional component to healing is, is just, it cannot be overstated how important it is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I want to thank you, Dr. Pompa, too, for being so vulnerable and sharing so much about your, your traumas and your personal history because I think a lot of times as you know, being in the health industry, health practitioners, we're put on a pedestal that, you know, we have perfect health. But but that's not true. We still struggle and we're real. And I just want to appreciate you, Dr. Pompa, for, for really sharing that because I know that was personal. Yeah, well, I, I appreciate that. And Catherine, thank you. You brought me there. <laughs> so <laughs> if I have to be vulnerable for my the, the people watching this, you know, then it sure is worth it because... Well, I, I'm kind of like, and I, maybe that's the competitive part of me, but I'm like, now I'm like, Hmm. I really want you to 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 get to that point of reading that Bruce Lipton book. I'm going to do it. I, I'm going to do it. If, if we had time on the show, I would do it. So you know what? We could bring Catherine back, and we could do another show. And I, I'll make both of you a promise, and my viewers, I will do it. Okay. And I'm not going to memorize the paragraph. I'll definitely, I'll definitely offer you some. Some between the between the episode Skype session, so we can see what else is there that might be preventing you from. You know what? And, and I'm willing. I'm willing to potentially be embarrassed. I, I'm willing to, for that to happen. And maybe not. Right? Maybe it'll just flow. Right? <laughs> you know, I'm able to read it now. Right? Of course. But it's when you go. Oh, yeah. So it's like. So I. You guys pick the paragraph. So you know, Dr. Bob <laughs> didn't prepare. So if I do nail it without embarrassment, I'm gonna feel how I feel. So uh, that'll be fun, and I'm willing to do that experiment. That is awesome. Awesome. Part two. Well, uh, thanks again, Catherine. This was a wonderful show. I know we got a lot of value of it. And, hey, another tool in our toolbox for healing. So thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Dr. Pompa. Thanks, everyone, for watching, and we'll catch you next time. Yep. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.